na ty krabičky to nalepte, jo? Jo, jo. Perfect JSP pellet. The approximate time is about two and a half seconds to produce one. At the moment it goes Monday to Friday, 24 hours. And this is going to be a myth-busting bonus round. So we are buying antimony as well into the blocks, but we are just turning it into the dust. Original to the first building, we always had to drive through here, uh -huh. and it's uh, nobody else is allowed to enter the road. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, HN Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Okay, McCall, what are we looking at? Hello, hello. So we are here at the first step where the process of uh, making pellets starting. Uh -huh. So we are buying a lead draw, 9997 pure, and we are melting it ourselves. So, and then we put some antimony and we are producing our lead wire, which is the first step of the production of the pellets. Okay, so this is the raw lead yeah. back here. Yeah. And then behind us which they can't see yet are the furnaces mm -hmm. and that's where you mix yeah, yeah. the antimony yeah we are getting some antimony to so the pellets it's much shinier and a little bit harder because the light is very soft okay do you just throw in all the antimony you want or is it no no that there is a certain percentage that we add it all right is it important yeah it's quite important okay what what's this here well this is this is the rest of the production of the second step. Yeah, out of the lead wire we are producing lead balls, which is next to in the, in the next room. And this is just the just the waste of it, and so we can remelt it again. Okay, and reuse it. Yeah, yeah, we are reusing it. Okay. Where does the lead come from? Like this lead, where do you get it? Well, we have a company which is uh, doing that business for us. It's situated here in Bohumin, and it's mostly from Poland. So the lead comes from Poland? Yeah, mostly from Poland. Yeah, we, we have some previous delivery also from Russia or Ukraine, but it's mostly from Poland. Is there a reason for that? Well, the consistency of, of this company is very good and it's very important to get always the same quality of, of pure lead. Okay, okay. So how much lead comes in, do you know, per day, per week? Well, per, per month it's about 70 tons per month. 70 tons? of lead yeah. per month. Yes. That's amazing. Well, yeah, so when there is the demand for the pellets, so we are able to, yeah. to, to, to do that. Are you keeping up with demand or is there still more demand than well, well, during the last two years we really grew up and now it's quite steady Okay. during the last two years. All right. So we will see what will, what will happen. Okay. All right, so behind us all this noise are the big furnaces. Yeah. Where you mix the antimony with the lead, yeah. and then it turns it into you call it wire. Yeah, yeah. There are several steps. Yeah, so the melting lead is pumped to another machine, which is, which is making uh, lead valve, uh -huh. and then it goes into the hydraulic press to a small, tiny, tiny, tiny pig, and then. It's Make the wire. Okay, cool. Should we go look? Yeah, yeah. You can right, let's go look. Better. Okay, furnaces. Furnaces. Two yes. of them. Yeah, two of them. Go. Yeah, at the beginning there was only one, but for uh, for the production reasons, we just added a second one to be sure that we can fill all the machines in the production. Okay. So one of the each and every one of furnaces can hold two tons of lead. 
so we just edit the blocks of lead which you see a few moments back and just put a certain amount of antimony cycle. Then the lead when it's liquid, so it's pumped into the casting machine. And the temperature inside the, uh, the furnaces is 500, 510 degrees. Celsius. 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 Yes. Celsius. Celsius. So, so is the casting machine inside the furnace? No, no, the casting machine is next to the furnace. On the other side? Yeah, on the other side. Okay. So, so, the, so, so it's pumped from the from the bottom, yeah. so all the waste just staying, staying up, so there is no any waste into the pellets and into the lead wire. Okay, so those big lead ingots that we saw yeah. over there, do they just throw them yes. in here or do they cut them up first? No, no, they are just throwing them in throw, the hole. Throw it in, and then you mix in the antimony, yeah, which yeah. is behind you. Yeah, so yeah. You want to grab some? Yeah, yeah. Get some. We are, so we are buying antimony as well into the blocks, but we are just turning it into the dust, so it's much better mixed with the with the lead inside the furnace. Okay, so they come in yeah. bigger pieces yeah, and you yeah. grind them up. Mm -hmm. How do you know how much antimony to put with each just, big lead block? Just experience. Okay, so that's secret. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit secret. Little bit secret. So you weigh it here and, yes. and you throw it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vedle uh, po tom zpracování toho drátu je asi 50% odpadu. Takže asi 3 až 3,5 tuny se zpátky vrátí do pece, které se zase přetaví a znovu se vyrová. Váží to kolem 10-12 kg. A tady z, toho, z tohohle velkého průměru se vy, ten náš líz vytlačí takové, takové nohé drát. So how does how does that mix with the lead in the furnace? Well, the, there is there is uh, a, a mixer which is continually mixing okay. the, the lead with, with with it. All right. So do these run at the same time? Yeah, 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 yeah. These are running at the same time, and we can we can pump the lead from one to each other. Really? Really. Why why would you want to do that? To, to save the time. Because the casting machine can work much faster than the than the furnace, so we edit the second one, and the process is much quicker. Oh, right? the casting machine that's on the on yeah. the back side. Yeah, yeah. So we can put the lead from this one to this one. Okay. So when the casting machine is taking lead from the first furnace, yeah. yeah. So we are melting the lead continually in the in the second one, and the, the procedure is much much faster. So, so the casting machine. Don't have to wait for for the light. Yeah, so the cast machine never runs out. Yeah, you can always yeah. just keep going. Yeah, what do right. you what do you use to um, what do you what's the source of heat for the furnace? Is it coal, well, gas, or no? It's, it's a gas. It is gas, like yeah. natural gas. Yeah, it's natural gas. Ah, interesting. Yeah. All right, so on the back side is the casting. Yes. Can we can we look at that? Yes, of course. Cool. Let's, Let's go. go see. <laughs> all right, I want to make sure we're keeping all this straight. So, furnace, casting, cutting, which is here, into the cylinders, yes. and then the press. Yeah, the hydraulic press. Okay, where the cylinders turn into the wire. Yeah. Okay, go. Okay, so when the, when the valves go into the cylinder, so it goes from this diameter into this diameter to produce the wire. Yeah. So we are producing the lead wire in different diameters from 4 millimeters up to 11, I think. Okay, so the lead wire is specific to the uh, diameter of the pallet. No, to, to specifically to which weight we want to produce. Which weight? Which weight, yeah. Aha, more so than the diameter yeah. of the pellet. Because the diameter yeah. pellet comes from the ball. Yeah, yeah. So okay. that is the next step and we are producing the lead balls, which we will do in a minute. Uh -huh. So that depends. How, how, how much weight of the pellets should be inside, so yeah. then we need bigger, bigger wire to produce okay. the specific weight. How does, how does the press turn the cylinder, it, it, and you guys, I don't know if you can tell, but this wire is it's actually moving, and it's hot. Yeah. So how does, how does this turn it into that? Well, there is the hydraulic press, which is very strong, and there, is, there are some tools inside, and it just pressed it. 
Okay, so does it heat it also? Yeah, it's a little bit heated. It's a little heated because yeah. I noticed that you were cooling them. Yeah. And then now they come back in here and yeah. then you reheat them, squeeze them. Okay. Yes. Cool. So once it's made into the, the wire, what happens then? Well, so the wire is going into, into the spooler. Yeah. Yeah, we have a spooler machine which is rounding it into the spooler. Okay, and then after the spool, it, they turn it into that ribbon, the, the flat, to yeah. make the balls. Is that right? So okay. from here, it turns yeah. into the, uh, that flat ribbon where you put the balls, right? No. No, what happens next? Well, next we are taking the spools with the light wire and we are moving into the second, into the next machines. I will show you it in a minute. Okay, sounds good. Let's go. Yeah. I want to see okay. it. All right, Mikhail, what is the word for this? Well, I can tell you it in, in Czech, but I don't know a word in English. Sorry. That, that's what I was trying to ask because it goes from the wire into this ribbon and then they punch the balls out and the balls become the pellets. Right. But um, but we'll get to that. Yes, of okay. course. Okay, so take it away. What's happening? Okay, so this is the last step of the lead wire production when the lead wire is is rolled on the on these spools. Each and every spooler can hold five five hundred kgs of lead wire. Five hundred what? Five hundred kilograms. Oh, kilograms. Kilograms. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, and the lead wire is still very hot, so so it has to rest approximately four to five hours until it goes into the next process. Five hours. Yeah, something like this. Okay. And how how much how do these machines run Monday through Friday, nine to five? Well or it goes at the moment it goes Monday to Friday twenty-four hours. Monday to twenty-four hours, yes. they never stop. Yes. So you have people working here yeah, yeah, on shifts. On shifts around the clock. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. And so okay. school Cool. and where we were before, we were standing just over here where that cylinder was pressed yes. into, into the wire. Into the specific diameter of the wire. Okay, so the lead wire, what happens next? So next it goes into the, another machines which are producing the lead balls. So let's okay. go there. After five hours? Yeah. All right, let's go look. Okay, let's go. Okay, so there it is. The spool of lead wire. Yeah. And what's happening? Well, what's happening here is that we are producing a lead balls out of the lead wire, and it's the most crucial step for the weight consistency of our pellets. So your lead wire turns into the lead ball here, and, and the rest of the belt which, which you are showing us is in a minute. So it's just the waste which it goes back to remelting. Okay, so the wire comes into this machine, yep. and this machine turns it from the wire into the ribbon. Yep. Ribbon is the English oh, okay. word for it. And then from the ribbon, you punch out the ball. The ball. And it's critical for the weight. For the consistency of the weight. So is this machine controlling the weight then? Yes. Okay, so 25.39 grains comes from, from, this, one. from this one. Okay. Yes. And where I'm standing, there's normally a machine, because I see... Yeah, yeah, we have four, four of these machines. Okay. Here, and one is just to repair at the moment. Oh, this one's getting, getting yeah, fixed. Yeah, it, it, it was here. Okay. So what is the noise we're hearing over here? Uh, it sounds like popcorn. Well, the noise is when, when the lead balls are falling into the, into, the, into the bucket. Okay, so the lead balls don't fall into water no, or no. oil? No. Oh. Because they're already sort of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is something you can see in the coping from the lead wire is a little bit. Some grease is putting on, uh -huh. but nothing else. Okay. So these machines also run 24 hours. No, those are running like 16 hours, Friday to uh, Monday to Friday. 16 hours a day, yeah. five five days a week. So not not quite as fast. Yeah. So these, the balls that are in these buckets here, is that waste? Yeah, probably those are the waste and which are good, so they are here and they are still oh, over there behind okay. you. Yeah, you can see it's over there. Okay, so that'll get recycled. Yes. The ribbon where the balls are cut from yes. will get recycled. Yeah. All right. So then once they're turned into the ball, yeah. what happens next? 
Well, the next step is that we are moving it into our second building, and out of the balls we are producing the lead pellets. So from the ball goes to the pellets. We have to yeah. switch buildings. Yeah, you have to switch to another building. Okay, well, we'll be back. Okay. Ooh, it's nice and quiet in here without the machines running. Well, yeah, there is a break for the workers at the moment. I like it. A quick detour before we said where we we said where we go where we said where where I can't even speak anymore. <laughs> before we go where we said we were going to. So yeah. the balls. Yeah, the balls goes into into those buckets, and then it goes to the machines which are producing the final pellets. I just forget to to tell you that all the machines are made by us uh -huh. for, for the producing the lead balls. And so you can't buy it on eBay? Yeah, you, can, you cannot buy it. It's just designed by, by our engineers in the past and we are still improving it during the time. And one more important thing, that out of the lead wire, just 60% goes into the lead balls and 40% is waste, which is goes remelt again. So, okay. so it's quite costly. Uh, so it's quite... Oh, so what is costly? Because it gets reused, so it's not wasted, right? Yeah, it's not wasted, but you have to pay the workers, you have to reheat it oh, again, and, yeah. and etc. And there are many manufacturers which are producing pellets directly out of lead wire, so they don't have this waste. kind of waste. Uh -huh. But okay. our technology is based that we have to produce those lead balls. Okay, I get it, that makes sense. All right, so... So this is so. What is happening? What is this? What well, is happening here? Well, this is this is the weight of the light bulb. So it's 0 0.547 in grams. Okay. So it's, plus so you, it's typical exact. So you don't use grains like no, no, put, no. We put on the tin. No, no. We are using just grams and kilograms. And here is the date what, uh, when it was produced and he was who, who produced them. Mm -hmm. So we, so we can control it back if the, there is some problem in production and the weight consistency is not good so we can find out who, who did the problem. Okay, now all of these buckets, are they all filled with the balls that yeah, are going to become yeah, the pellets? Yeah, they are all filled uh, with lead balls in, in different weights. So these are 0 0.547, here we have 0 0.520, mm -hmm. and there are some bigger ones, 1.72 okay. grams. So this is so finished product before it's going to go to the other, so they, right. you, you, move, you take these buckets. Yeah, and we are, we are moving it to another building okay. or to our area, which is approximately 500 from this building. 500 meters. 500 meters. 500 yeah. meters. Okay. Cool. Well, um, let's go look at that. Okay, let's go. All right. Hey guys, I'm seeing machines everywhere. It's not just this room. They're they're that way, they're tucked in these rooms here, they're all the way down here tucked in rooms. Over here there's a bunch of machines, so yeah. that's a lot. Well, yeah, this is the heart of the company. Yeah. Uh, the machines are also made by ourselves, so nobody else has them. And this, uh, this is where we produce the, the pellets. At the moment we have 78 pressing stages on 18 different machines. Okay, and so... Can, can any machine make any pellet? Yeah, any machine can produce any pellet except of some 9 millimeters, which is a big one, so there are only two special places, but, but then it depends what you put inside the machine. Okay. Yeah, so you, the machine has, has it, it's hard, how it's made, yeah. so then it depends which of the balls you put inside, yeah. and it goes through, and then there is a die, the punch, and the, the tool for making the head, and it's just pressed. Okay, so if you, you change the heads around yeah. to fit the pallet that you want to make. Yeah, at, right. At the the different, different tools so we can produce whichever pallet you want. Okay. Now I noticed there aren't people hovering over every single machine. There, there's people in here, but they yeah. kind of check and move around. Yeah, what yeah. are they doing? Well, they are filling the lead balls into the machine over there, yes. And they are checking the quality of control. If there is no any leak or everything goes smooth okay and if, if, the, if the weight of the balls is correctly done yeah, so then we can see some some differences when the pellet is not perfect so they they have to check what's wrong yeah and they have to reset the machine and, and get everything right okay so these machines you got you guys make them right yes. Or you, you yeah, 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 the, the former owner of the company is who? Uh, it's Mr. Schultz, 
and he invented all of these machines. So Joe, so if you don't know where the name JSB comes from, right. it's Joseph Schultz. And, and then Bohemian. This is the city. This that is the city. This is the city we're in. Right. And I actually had the honor of meeting him about yeah. ten minutes ago. And yeah, yeah, what he, a great guy. Yeah, he's still coming to the company. It's like his child, as he said. Yeah, he doesn't own it anymore. No. But he's here like every day. Yes. Like he has aquariums set up here and yeah, offices. Yeah, it's yeah, like right. it's like his baby. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen the process up to here, mm -hmm. to where we get to, you make the, the balls that are of a specific weight. Mm -hmm. And then the ball gets dropped into here. Yes. So like you said, this is just a giant press. Yes. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about maybe what's happening? No, as I told you before, the, the ball is just falling, falling down there into the, into the small valve. But the ball becomes a valve again. Then it goes into the die from the second, second from one side the head tool making tool is coming and the punch just press it when everything is hold okay. together and then the die just opens and the final pallet just fall, falling so down. It just falls into okay, so yeah. balls go in the top, pellets come yeah. out the uh, the bottom. Yeah, it's amazing. Approximate time. Perfect JSP pellet. The approximate time is about two and a half seconds to produce one. Okay. Now, I see balls, 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 balls. So each table is producing four, four pellets four at pretty much at the, at, the, uh, yes. at the same time. Right. You know? Wow. This is amazing. And then underneath, these are the yeah, buckets. Yeah, yeah, these are the buckets with the balls to, the ball. to feed the machines. Okay. So is there, I, like I said, there's machines all over the place. Is there a difference between these machines and the machines I see over here? Uh, not really, they are all the same. Just, just the first one, which were originally made in 1993. They have six pressing stages and are a little bit smaller. Okay. So, so this is the second generation, which became from the experience how they, how they was uh, maintaining the first machine and then they have some calls, okay, let's make it bigger and more simple for the workers and, and etc. All right, now to be clear, there's two buildings. This is this is the original building. Yeah, this is the original. So all the machines are in the original building and then the new building was from yeah. seven years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And that's where the furnace is and where you do the, the smelting yeah. Yeah, right. and all, all these things mm -hmm. and where you make the wire, ribbon, and balls. Yeah. And you bring the balls over here, mm -hmm. and they get, and they get, turn into pellets. Yeah, right. And after the pellet is made, so we are moving it back to the first building, when where is the quality control and uh, checking department. Yeah, I was just going to ask, so at some point you have to make sure that that is yeah. a good pellet. Yeah, the, the first control is here when the guys are running around, but they can, cannot control each and every one because there is quite a lot of machines and they have a lot of work. So then it goes to the quality department and we will show you okay. later. What, the guys that are here, yeah. what are they checking for? Well, they are checking, uh, you know, for this, there could be some flashes or if the tool is not perfectly again, so the lead is leaking from behind, uh -huh. there can be some holes in the head when the, when the lead balls is not produced perfectly, so it could be some some holes in that, and there are different weights, different types of these, okay. these things. Okay. I noticed when the pellets come to us, they have like a uh, like an oily residue. Do huh? you add that, or is that in this, or where does that well, come from? Well, we are adding it into, into the lead balls. To the lead balls? To the lead balls. Not the final, so yeah. you're not squirting oil in, in the final? No, 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 yeah. onto the lead balls, and it's just for the production reason. Uh -huh. And then, then we're trying to, to clean it. So, 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 so we are not adding it on purpose. Okay, it, but, it, but it, there's... It's just for the production, uh -huh. and then we try to, to clean it. You try to as, remove as much, it? As much as we can, yes. Uh, see, I as a consumer always thought that you guys were adding that oh. to maybe preserve it in packaging, or maybe prevent or reduce fouling in the barrel. No. But that's not it no, at all. No, no, no. It's just for the production. Uh -huh, so it doesn't stick yes. inside the press. Right. Uh, it's very and interesting. And then you pull it down there because 
because the lead itself is quite sticky. Okay. So once we have the pellets, did they, we go back to the other building right. for quality control? Right. I saw a shooting range in there. Yeah, we have a shooting range over here. So, so before we, we run the batch, yeah. so it has to go to to quality control here on the on the testing range. Okay. I, I will show you testing range now, and yeah. then we will move to the quality control. Yeah, where that's where all the people are checking. Yes. And then the packet. Yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> cool. Let's okay. Do it. Okay, guys. Now we're gonna sort of shift gears into several layers of quality control. Okay. And this behind us is a 50 meter, 50 meter testing, tunnel. testing tunnel, but you guys didn't build it. Well, no, it was the area which we are now, it's a former shooting range where, where the army was training their shooting here. Which army when? Uh, it was an army during the communist time, so it was the Czech army. Okay, so the Czech army, so the, the facility that you guys have inherited and built your... Well, yes, yeah, so some, some the, the old buildings are made by them and then we built some new one. Okay, well. but originally this was a, a, yeah. a Czech, Soviet, or, or, or communist. Yeah, during the communist during, time. During the communist yeah. time, yeah. Um, shoot, shooting facility, yeah. and that's what this tunnel is from. Yeah, it, it works. Till 1989, okay. and then Mr. Schultz started the to build, to build his company, and then he started in 1993. Okay, so what do you what do you guys do here? Yeah, well, after the uh, production of the pellets, when the when the guys in production did the first quality control, so each and every batch goes here and it's tested on 50 meters to meet the JSB standard. Every batch? Every batch. Okay, so what those guys are doing, they're just looking for flashing, yes. or maybe, like what you said, there's a... Yeah, when the, tool, leaking, when the tool is broken, is broken so, so it's leaking, and there could be some holes in the head, and etc. So, yeah. So that's the first step, and then the second step is the accuracy of the pellet. Okay, so, so are you shoot what, what, this, this is 50 meters, but do you shoot them at 50 meters? Yeah, we shoot them at 50 meters, and some sometimes uh, we can shoot also on, uh, on a distance of 100 meter because we can open the tunnel and there is 50 more meters but it's just outside so uh -huh. that, so there is no that it could be affected by wind on the next 50 meters okay but mostly we, we are testing it on 50 meters here we have a gun air arms FGP yeah, 900 yes yeah yeah it's put it into the clamp uh, to to reject the, the manifold uh -huh. and then it's shot. Do you always use this? No, we are using different type of guns. Yeah, we have air arms, FX, uh, Ed gun, and yeah, but uh, all, all uh, different. mostly all of different okay. types of guns. What is, what is acceptable at 50 yards? Well, it depends on which type of pellet it is. Uh -huh. Okay, I see there's lots of pellets over here. Yeah, I can, show you, I can show you some targets on the 10 meter shooting range uh -huh. because uh, they, they are stacking it there. Okay, the, yeah, there's also a 10 meter range. Yeah, yeah the 10 meter range here. is just for the match pellets for the ISS, ISS shooters. And who, and they, have a, they have a special guest today. Yeah, Who's today, shooting over there today? Yeah, today there is, there is Mr. City from Hungary. Uh -huh. He's one of the famous ISS shooters. And what what of the famous or the most famous? Well, one of the most famous is here, and there are many of them coming once a year to to come uh, to. And they bring their rifles, mm -hmm. and they they testing all the batches that we have at the moment, and they they just pick the best one for their specific rifle. Mm -hmm.
Do you let anyone do that from the public or only the, these championship? No, also, also for the public if it's, if, if, if you have time so anybody can come. Wow, nice. And it's heated. It's yeah. so yeah, warm in here. It's not, yeah. it's not warm out there. Okay, cool. So, so the batches come in here, you test every single batch. Yeah, yeah. and if it's okay, so then the production goes continually. Okay, and, and if it's not okay, you go back and make changes. Yeah, make changes, and if you change any of the tool, yeah. so it has to go again here okay. for the testing. Okay, so if they pass inspection here, yeah. do they then go in the tin to these guys, or is there one more? No, there's one more step. There is a quality control department where there are approximately 40 ladies, and they are checking each and every one pellet. Okay, can we see that? Yeah, yeah, we will move there. Sweet, let's go. <laughs> it's hard not to be upstairs here and not... I, <laughs> it's all, I almost feel giddy because what you guys don't realize is that you, know, you can see this quality control behind me, but there's, there's desks opposite these ladies. Over here, what you see here is also over here. There's another whole room over there. There's another whole room over there. So it's like right. you guys have dedicated like an entire floor mm -hmm. to quality control checking yes. so, the pallets. Yeah, so How I, many ladies? As I said, everything what is produced goes here to the quality control department and we have approximately 32 ladies doing the quality control with tweezers and magnifying glass, just like you can see. Literally a tweezers us. and a magnifying yes. glass. And what's interesting is they seem to be like on a like some kind of like a rotation well, I've seen like, go well, ahead. Well, yeah, because there are so many of them and the, the room for, for their lunch and etc. is quite small, so they have to shift to, so they can get in. I see. So is this also around the clock or is this Monday through Friday? Yeah, it's Monday to Friday, six hours every day and sometimes some Saturdays as well when okay. we need it. And what are, what are they, can you describe the process? of what these ladies are doing. What are they looking for? What are they checking for? Well, they are looking for each and every difficulties that, which can be seen by eye, so everything which is out of the normal, so they can, they have to find it. Okay, so is it really they're just looking for a, a visible defect? Mm -hmm. Are they checking weight? Are they checking with a caliper's diameter? What are they No, no, they are mostly checking the, the difficulties and we are checking the diameters and etc down there when the batches is done mm -hmm. so then there is the diameter check okay so if i'm reading and you, about, and about, the, about the way that there is the step on the previous machine as i told you mm -hmm. before because what's inside the ball so everything goes into the pellets there is no waste during the process of, of making the pellets so, okay. so that's why the process of making the lead balls is so crucial for us because okay. everything what is into the, in the ball yeah. goes into the pellet. Okay, so if, the, if you get the ball right, yeah. the pellet's probably going to be yes. right. But just in case, mm -hmm. I mean, are, are these ladies, are they checking, are they checking every pellet, every yeah. batch? Or is this just like, you know, maybe one in <coughs> well, hundreds? Well, they're checking each and every one, but there are also some, uh, some cheap, cheap pellets, especially for the match shooters, yeah, so the quality control is much faster. So, yeah. yeah. There are several steps, yeah. so some of the control is really slow, especially for the ice shooters, yeah, because the target is so small mm -hmm. and so tiny. Mm -hmm. uh, so then it has to be really done properly. And, you know, there are different types of pellets in match. Yeah, they are the premium line, the, then the regular one, and there are some training versions, so the training versions are controlled a little bit faster. Yeah, like I, I, I think I remember seeing, and you and I didn't stop at that station to talk about it, but there was two yeah. sort of, and that was for the premier pellets, there were yeah. machines. Yeah, there are machines that are waiting the lead balls. They're waiting the lead balls to make sure they're like extra, extra yes. precise. Yes. Yeah, but those pellets also still go through yes. this, this manual inspection right god this is crazy like i'm so overwhelmed what am i forgetting to ask you about this area that is that is important well nothing they're just literally tweezers and magnifying glasses yes. sifting through looking yeah. for anything and then yeah, the bad and they, they have to be really trained well they took about three months to train a single lady mm -hmm. how to do that properly what it, what what's a what is properly 
Uh, well, to be sure that you then go to the shop and buy the tin of pellets and it will be perfect. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> All right, so over here, it looked like it was sort of like um, organizing and maybe packing. Yeah, yeah. In the second room, there is the packing department, so let's move there. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in the packaging, the packaging department, right? but also packaging pellets in tins. Yes. Okay, so what's okay. happening? Okay, so after the quality control, all the pellets come here. The final cleaning is done here for the pellets. So, so the rest of the production, grease and oil and that's dry removed with this machine. There is just cart cartoon inside, it's just moving and rolling. Yeah. Oh, so oh okay, so, so there's so it goes more the pellets in here from, yeah, yeah. from the tins. Yeah. And then, and then, then it goes to this like this. It's done here approximately. Uh -huh. And then each and everything is weighted. So we know uh, that there are 500 pieces inside. I was wondering, and do you it, count them or do you weigh no, them? No, no, we are just weighting them. Okay. And just to be sure, there is 500 at least, so we are adding one or two more. Oh, okay, so, so, so you that get that a little bit more than 500. Yeah, so that there should be a little bit more than 500. Uh-huh. So okay, okay, so she's weighing them. Yeah, she's weighing them. And what's the next girl doing? The next girl is putting the, the stick mm -hmm. or, or the label on the tin. Yeah. And then there, there is some foiling and it's going into the cartoons and then... Oh, they, stick, uh, yeah, they put the foil around. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, and everything is done by our ladies here, so we have no machine for this at the moment. It's all hand done. All, all hand done. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. So I hear I hear lots of things going on well, over there. Yeah, we have two two tables like this here, so we can we can manage to pack everything. Okay. In, in time. So I see piles of tins down at the end there. How do those get into the boxes? Is, is that over here, or do they do that here too? No, they are doing it here as well. Here as well. All right. right. Did we miss anything? No, I don't think so. It's just the end of the process, and then it's just shipped all around the world. Amazing. God. I, Mikhail, I can't thank you enough for, for letting uh, us in your you're facility. Welcome and and thank you for coming. Absolutely. It's really an honor to have you here. This has been a great honor, and, and I think they thank you as well. Okay. Truly. Okay. Really thank appreciate you. you, sir. Thanks. Fantastic. Okay, Pavel, managing director, we got a bonus round. And this is gonna be a myth-busting bonus round. Okay, something, a perception that we have as air gunners. And it's talked about on all the forums, on all the YouTube channels. And, and, there's, and there's a lot of misinformation around this. But we have the perception that Air Arms, Day State, Ed Gun, FX, all these different brands, and I'm sure that there's more, that you manufacture pellets for, they each have their own specific dyes and presses for that batch of pellets. But that's not actually how it works, is it? Oh, that's not really the truth. All right, uh, well, let's, let's, let's reveal the truth. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, our, one of our most popular pellet, which is the 18 grain GSD Jumbo Heavies in yeah. caliber 22. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, because of the high demand, it's produced on 10 different dyes uh, 10 different tools, 10 different tools uh, produced on the same specifications unfortunately won't, will never be the same. Uh, that's because of the technology limits which are at the moment uh, set up. So 10 different dyes, 10 different uh, pellets, even though they should be the same, they will never be the same. They, you will always find some slight uh, variances between them. Let's imagine the situation. Uh, we have the January delivery to FX, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't. We never mix their delivery from various uh, batches, various lots, various uh, presses. They they prefer uh, the pellets to be as constant as uh, always the always the same. So we prepare them from the batch number one, from the die number one, and uh, okay. the day state will come out of die number three or 17 or 65. Now I understand how we got that perception because, you know, we will buy like a, a sleeve maybe of FX pellets, a sleeve of Daystate or Edgun pellets, 
and they're different sometimes, not all the time, from our sleeve of, of JSB pellets or the FX exactly. system for the Air Arms. It's not that you have specific dyes for the different brands, it's that you like to run a whole batch for that company. Absolutely. Through that dye for consistency. Yes. Aha. And consistency is always the what, what, what really matters to them, yeah. to our customers, to our to all the shooters. Yeah. Myth busted. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of myths, I know they all are very eager to hear if uh, you guys are working on slugs. What yes, can you say? Yes, uh, we are working on them for over a year now. Unfortunately, uh, we are not as successful as we want to be. Uh, as you know, GSB always wants to be a leader in precision, in quality, in, uh, in accuracy. Well, so far we didn't manage to get a proper form, proper manufacturing uh, technology to make, the, to make the slugs better than all the others. We always be what wants to be better than the others. Sure. And uh, as long as we are not better, we will not come on the market with this product. But uh, mm -hmm. we are working hard and uh, fingers crossed, uh, next week we are getting another set of uh, dyes from our supplier and hopefully the slugs will finally meet our expectations, will beat all the others <laughs> and will be the most consistent, most uh, okay. accurate and most precise on the market, which we will finally uh, bring to you okay so i have a question so are the they, they've seen now all the machinery that makes the pallets and how they're made are those same machines going to also be making the slugs or is it different machines altogether yes they can uh, with some uh, minor uh, changes adjustments they can produce the slugs as well but we are we are also working with uh, another company which is, which is totally different technology mm -hmm. and it's not uh, casting, it's different technology uh -huh. which, uh, it, which should be a little different than all the others. Is that country in the Republic? Yes, that's the, it is. It, it, the company is in, in the Czech Republic, yeah. Okay. At the moment they are not involved in uh, pallet production, mm -hmm. they are involved in uh, air gun industry. They are? Yeah, but they are not involved in, in uh, pallet pr production at the moment. Okay, so can you speak to, because um, they want to know, you know, what calibers, hollow point, not hollow point. Can you talk a little bit about your development and yes, what, we, what, what you want to do? For sure, we will start with caliber 22 and 25 slugs. We are working on, we were experimenting with different diameters uh, to fit all the barrels uh, which are currently available on the market. We are working on different weights. We definitely want them to be hollow point, okay. to, to, because we think the major, the majority of the slug users will be hunters. So that's that's it. That's pretty it. Okay, and and I and I guess um, there's one more myth that we touched on it earlier, but with Pavel here, I, I want to kind of hit it again. You know, when we when we get our pellets home, our JSP pellets home, they they feel like they look really clean. They look really shiny. I feel like they have a light coat of oil on there. Is that a is that like a special witch's brew oil that you guys spray on there <laughs> to make the pellet more accurate and not foul the barrel, or is that or is that something different? It's a it's not a standard oil which you can buy in the in the shop or yeah. in the in the warehouse uh, anywhere. We the, the, Lubrication is a part of the technology, I would say, which is a very important part of the technology, but we don't use any special lubricant for the pellets to shoot well. The lubricant has to meet several, which we use. Uh, it's put on during the manufacturing process, mm -hmm. and it has to meet several requirements. Uh, it has to uh, protect the pellets from oxidating. Mm -hmm. It has to protect the machines from wearing out too soon or too early. Okay. It has to. Uh, it. We don't want the, lubri the, the lubricant to make the barrels dirty. Okay. To keep them clean. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not really any special process. You put it on during the manufacturing process, and then the cleaning is done okay. just before the quality control, which you may see 
here on this video as well. Okay. Now some people, thank you. And, and that's pretty much what McCall said too. I just wanted to double double check. You know, they're not spraying some some uh, pixie dust oil on their on their. <laughs> it's nothing right. like that. It's really for the machines and the and the protected and, and freight and yes, in, in these exactly. kinds of things. Okay. Is there anything else that? Are there any mysteries or maybe questions that come to you all the time that I have forgotten to ask? Uh, a lot of people are asking, how do we sort the pellets uh, for the caliber differences? How do you sort the pellets from 4.50 to 4.51? Oh, yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> well, we don't sort them. We produce them in those calibers. You actually produce them so that you don't have to check. You're not yeah, checking. Yeah, exactly. It. Our, our uh, tooling for production are as precisely made that we can guarantee, uh, thanks to our to quality control, mm -hmm. uh, if, the, if the diameter of the head tool would be 4.52, mm -hmm. and you can see here in the quality control that the edge is nice and sharp mm -hmm. and without any damage. It's 4.52. It's 4.52. Uh -huh. So you don't have that extra layer of like checking and, no, 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 and, the, no. and these kinds of things. You know what I do want to ask you? You know, just to give you guys kind of the topography here, um, Pavel and McCall, they're both kind of uh, owner operators here at JSB. Um, McCall's focus is more manufacturing. Pavel's focus is more um, operations, these, these kinds of things. And I, I want to ask, this blows my mind what's going on behind us here. You know, I see tweezers, I see magnifying glasses, but I see other things going on. How would you describe this process of quality control? Well, completely those ladies are... Uh, it's also a part of the production. It's not only quality control. They have to clean, and while cleaning the, the, the pellets, they also they are getting uh, rid out of... Uh, they are getting rid of uh, the lubricants, the extra lubricants, uh -huh. and extra pieces of lead which could, which could uh, stay on the pellets during the yeah, like a process, dust or the dust, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. That's the word. The, uh, all the dust and want to make them shiny, mm -hmm. make them pretty. Yeah, should, make them pretty. Should these guys be washing their pellets? Because there, there's a, there's a lot of information. This I've never washed a pellet in my life, and they all seem to fly pretty straight for me. What's what's the factory's take on on pellet washing? Well, we never wash them before we use them in the testing channel and we shoot thousands and thousands and thousands of pellets per week. You can't imagine it's constant flow yeah, of yeah. shooting and shooting, testing, making sure all the batches from all the, all the uh, pressing mm -hmm. tools and pressing uh, stations are correct, shooting straight, shooting yeah. uh, good groups. So, and the barrels, they are in excellent conditions even after years of use. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't really use any extra... Uh, There's any no benefit to no. washing your pellets. Now you have, a, you have a special guest here today. Yes, Downstairs in the 10 meter. Well, and who is that? Uh, the guy named Peter Siri. Yeah. He's from Hungary mm -hmm. and is actually the world record holder in the 10 meter ISSF uh, discipline and one of the most successful uh, ISSF 10 meter uh, Olympic shooter in the history. And now he's so downstairs batch testing. He's probably got a dozen or more of his guns down there. Is he washing his pellets? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. <laughs> you can be sure. That's all, man. Thank, thanks Thank again. Thank you very much. Thanks for showing us around and letting us in. This is just amazing. And, and um, Thanks for this opportunity. You're very welcome. <laughs> Appreciate you, man.